On June 16, 1983, two boxers entered the ring at Madison Square Garden in New York City. One was a journeyman with a decent record seen as more of a stepping stone for a real top boxer. The other was a man who might just have been that top boxer or at least a potential up-and-comer to watch. There was a clear favorite among the audience, but the underdog and his crew had different plans. The fight was between Louis Resto and Billy Collins Jr. What at first seemed to be an easy win for Collins turned out to be anything but. It was an upset that shocked the boxing world, but not just because of who won. Instead, the match has become infamous and unforgettable because at the center of it lay a cheating scandal, one that may well have led to Billy Collins' death who were the two fighters and what led to the match ending in such tragedy? Welcome to the Steven Strangles channel. If you enjoy documentaries like this one, consider leaving a like, subscribing, and turning on post notifications. We do videos like this every single week. Without further ado, let's get back into it. In one corner of the ring was Louis Resto, Born in Puerto Rico, Resto moved to the Bronx when he was just nine years old. He spent six months in a rehab center when he was in eighth grade for striking a teacher, one of his early flirts with violence. He got into boxing shortly after, encouraged by a family member. As a boxer, he fought in the welterweight division, and he started strong with a run of seven wins and no losses. He was a two-time New York State Golden Gloves champion. By the time of the Collins fight, Resto had 19 wins and 8 losses, but there was one stat that stood out compared to his opponent. He only had 8 of his 19 wins by knockout. Now, he was no slouch or laughing stock when it came to his record, but he did have a reputation as a man who could take hits but not dish them out. He was seen as a light puncher without too much knockout power more of a journeyman than a real superstar. This separated him from Collins, who was quickly becoming a favorite among the crowds, especially the betting crowds. But as Resto would later allege, his trainer, Panama Lewis, had some people with other plans. Prior to the fight, Resto stated that his trainer had met with some people with unknown shady ties who had bet a lot of money on the underdog, Resto. Resto didn't seem to know the whole story behind the money being bet on his name, or maybe just didn't want to publicly say the whole story if he did. But this money may well have been the reason that the fight went the exact way that it did. In the other corner was Billy Collins Jr. Irish Billy Collins! Collins Jr. seemed destined to be a boxer from birth. He was born to a working class family in Tennessee and was the son of a former welterweight pro boxer himself. His father had trained him in boxing since he was a child, always wanting Collins to follow in his footsteps. And for a while, it seemed that Collins was destined to be a fighter that any father could be proud of. He was a relative newcomer at the time of his match against Resto. Compared to Resto's record of 30 fights, Collins had just 14 fights under his belt. But there was a crucial difference between him and Resto. Not only was Collins on a 14-fight win streak since his debut, but he had also won 11 fights by knockout. With this being his first match on a stage this big, this was his opportunity to become one of the rising stars of American boxing. He saw it as his window to make his family some real money and rise above his own background to give his children a better life. And the betting for the upcoming fight between the two reflected the fact that Collins was seen as the better fighter by many. Collins was by far the favorite to win in the betting rounds, with Resto standing as a clear underdog. But almost no one could have seen the real results of the fight coming. With both fighters in the ring in Madison Square Garden, the bell rang to start the fight. But from the moment the match began, something seemed incredibly strange. Louis Resto, who had never been known as the heavy hitter with crazy punching power, seemed to strike with strength that no one had seen in him before. Every strike was hitting Collins like a boulder, bruising and swelling up his face beyond belief. Collins, who was more of the power puncher, seemed to be struggling to stay standing against Resto's unexpectedly brutal blows. By the end, it seemed impossible that Collins could keep standing, but he still did. He withstood the punishment for 10 rounds and stayed up until the end. But Resto, the man heavily considered the underdog in the fight, had dominated like no one could believe. The fight ended with a unanimous decision. Louis Resto had won the fight. Now, there's a world where, in the public eye, that could have been the end of the story. A world where Resto got away with it, where he was known as a surprise upset winner against Collins. The match could have been a relatively minor event known only to some diehards as a strong upset that cost a lot of people money. But that's not what happened that night. When Resto came to Collins' corner to shake his hand, Billy Collins Sr., the boxer's father, noticed something that was wrong. Yeah, 
When he shook Resto's hand, he felt that the boxing glove was missing its padding. Immediately, he alerted the New York State Athletic Commission. The commission impounded the gloves and discovered that Colin Sr. was in fact correct. The gloves were missing their padding, giving Louis Resto the ability to hit hard and unfairly do massive damage to Collins. In the investigation that followed, Panama Lewis was the man singled out for orchestrating the assault. Preceding this scandal in the early 80s, Panama Lewis was considered a great boxing trainer. But this reputation had come into question before. As it turned out, this wasn't Lewis's first controversy with cheating in pro boxing matches. In 1982, Aaron Pryor, one of Lewis's prized boxers and a light welterweight champion, fought against Nicaraguan boxer Alexis Arguello for the junior light welterweight title. During the fight, Lewis was caught yelling an order at the corner man. Give me that about the one I mix. Pryor would go on to win the title and shake the foundation of Lewis's reputation. Louis Resto himself would later allege that Lewis would break apart pills intended to treat asthma and pour the medication into the bottles intended for his boxers. This would give them better lung capacity for stamina in the later rounds of the matches. When it came to the topic of the gloves though, Resto denied all knowledge for a long while. At first, for nearly 25 years, Resto claimed that Lewis had tampered with the gloves without his knowledge, that he had no idea of his advantage. Advantage. But as he would eventually admit, Resto had not only known about Lewis's padding removal, but had actually known of Lewis removing padding from gloves in matches even before this. What's more, he had even gone along with Lewis in taking the cheating even further. Resto admitted that Lewis had soaked his hand wraps in plaster prior to the fight. When they dried inside the glove, they hardened. This meant that Collins wasn't just feeling the shots from unpadded fists, but what instead felt like hard, rough, solid strikes from giant rocks. While it's unknown if Lewis had done this plaster move before as well, it is known that he sadly wouldn't be the last to do it. After the investigation, the fight was changed from a victory for Resto to a no contest. The match could have been the one that changed Billy Collins Jr.'s life for the better, but even though it didn't make him the up and coming boxer to watch, sadly, in a way, it did still change his life. Only it was for the worse. Because of the relentless strikes from the unpadded gloves and the plaster badges, Collins' face had been savagely brutalized. Immediately after the match, his entire face was heavily swollen, especially around his eyes. Louis Resto had spared no chance to dish out damage, had shown no mercy despite knowing about the unfair advantage that he had, and the result was irreparable damage to Collins. Billy Collins' iris was torn as a result of the fight, giving him permanently, incurably blurred vision. He could never box again. This unfortunate turn seemed to shatter Collins and ultimately ended in yet another tragedy. Collins took to drinking heavily after the rigged fight. The Collins family also attempted to sue Lewis, Resto, the boxing promoter, inspector, referee, and makers of the glove for the gross negligence and loss of income. But the courts ruled against the family. One night after heavy drinking, he crashed his car near his home in Tennessee. He died in the crash. According to his family and various people close to him, the death may as well have been suicide. There's a saying in life, if you're not cheating, you're not trying. Basically, to try to make it in life, you have to try everything that you can. Try to get away with whatever you can to succeed. And it's a saying that athletes across essentially every sport take to heart. Whether it's a baseball team trying to figure out new ways to steal signs, fighters taking steroids and other performance enhancers, or even just runners and shoe companies working to innovate new technology to push the limit of human endurance and speed. The line for what is considered unacceptable in sports is rewritten constantly. Every time a performer comes up with some new idea that's never been tried before. But Louis Resto and Panama Lewis are not men who skirted the line of unfair advantage. They're men that crossed it completely in a new way that cannot be defended. Resto, for whatever it may be worth, has not only admitted to his part in the scheme, but allegedly apologized to Collins' widow. Panama Lewis, meanwhile, denied it all the way to the grave. He died in 2020, outliving Billy Collins Jr. by 36 years.